All right, folks. <laughs> I was hoping to actually do the series premiere or season premiere. I mean, season review of Infinity Train season 2.5. But it looks like I reached the end of the episodes and it turns out that there's still more episodes to happen. So I'm just going to do the plan that I did once, which was... Excuse me, sorry about that. I was going to do the first 10 episodes of One Punch Man, but 13 episodes, so I didn't know that part. That's what I'm going to do. It's basically I'm going to try to do the first five episodes and then the next five episodes. For anyone who actually is like, I don't want to have spoilers. Let's just say the first one will give you spoilers, but it's not that bad. Because, well, you might not be able to do it. But anyways, watch, don't watch, definitely a must watch. It is a great story that they're telling. We actually get to see what happens with the Apex team, especially with Grace and Simon. And you should be watching. Of course, if you're not able to watch, then stay tuned. I'm going to include you in what's going on. So at least you know what's going on besides being like, I have no idea. I wish I could easily say, oh, Cartoon Network, sooner or later you're going to have it on here, but I'm not sure. Because if they were going to do it, then the Looney Tunes reboot that they've done should have actually have been on Cartoon Network by now, technically. So anyways, <clears throat> for anyone who doesn't want spoilers, that is what I'm going to tell you is that is a must watch. Watch it now. As for everyone else who wants to just hear what happens, here we go. So, of course, like I said in the first episode, gee whiz, stomach issues. So, like I said in the first video of this, is that the Apex team, aka the leaders, Grace and Simon, got separated from their group. It was a plot be because of 1-1. One -one. So we get to episodes two and episode two, they actually went into a jungle like train and they meet two characters. We meet Hazel and Tuba. Tuba's a gorilla who actually has tubas on her back. Basically, she's kind of a loudred if we're going to say what she is. Well, Hazel apparently is a little kid who has no memory of who the frick she is and her number on her hand, which was 373, is black. It's not glowing. So <clears throat> it gets you to the point of being like, oh, so if you hit your head and get amnesia, the number will get black. You can't move on forward because if you don't know who you are. Of course, you know, it could be something different, which it gets later on the idea of what's oh, different. <clears throat> so what their plan is, is to take Hazel away from Tuba and have another kid for the Apex team, Apex group. So eventually they got her to come out as soon as they did that. Then we get to episode three, which episode three basically shows them at a, <clears throat> excuse me. A fancy ballroom like train and this train you actually have to learn how to do the waltz so that's what basically happens and well lo and behold secretly I guess at this point Grace and Simon were both losing numbers you know because we didn't get to see that actually happen until episode 4 where it's a snowball fight so episode four, after they escaped that one, they went into another train. And this train actually is, I guess, a hideaway one. This one actually doesn't have anything, but I guess technically one one is having a great idea of what the frick to do. Oh, yes, there's lots of stuff that has been noted. In episode three, we get a new detail that Grace actually had of parents who actually want her to learn the best of the best. And because of that, she always was alone with the teacher. <laughs> We're not going to get into that messed up part of where, oh no, the teacher did something to no, no, nah. And when she finally actually got to have a group 
she actually wasn't included because they did not know who she is thus made her even more lonely and i bet that chances are that was the time where she got taken into the infinity train maybe and then we get noted of what happened with simon too so it turns out simon apparently was very attached to his familiar partner you know and then in episode four it comes to the head of we find out who it was oh yeah and note tuba actually was a mom but her daughter bugle died or something so yeah she's not longer with them so that's why she has grace taking care of her just like toot toot in that one episode of the simpsons so <clears throat> it comes to a head where one one's like oh the cat is actually vacationing she also took a guy damn i forgot the name of the bear but there's another person who actually is there and also the other person i think we saw beforehand the liquid person he's there too so he decided to actually use them to get their numbers lowered so they had a snowball fight and actually lowered grace's well not a snowball fight it's more like picking up um hazel when she got hit with a snowball and her number went down and it's like oh what the fuck <laughs> so it's like yeah so with that said, um, they it started to snow heavily. They're stuck in the cabin, and we find out that Simon's partner, that's supposed to have helped them to the end, was actually the cat. And the cat actually abandoned him after months. Whoa! I mean, yeah, I can see exactly because that's her character but you would figure he would have got someone else along the way i mean well yeah because usually when it comes to stories like this we already seen two seasons of this we had tulip with one one and king kogi let's say that and then in the second one we had the jock or the swim guy with crap i forgot what mirror was but anyways mirror person and also Dra dracula <laughs> yeah so it's like it always comes in threes and for him apparently it was just a cat which i'm like that's not how it's supposed to go down even if the cat abandoned him he should have had someone else with him but at that point that makes sense of where grace is like as soon as i met you you were in pieces which is like yeah he was just 10 years old the cat just left him and apparently the cat actually loves to collect which makes sense so yeah that was something where apparently he has a the cat actually has a sweet spot for simon believe it or not or at least guilt <clears throat> so after all that comes to a head they were able to leave because well you know the snow was able to dissipate because the liquid person was the one that does everything because there was no water or anything here it was barren so there we go and then we get to episode five now episode five we get into this weird color cart that actually changes and changes the environment for all the color we get and the dude that actually is operating this is roy roy's our boy <laughs> so apparently um <clears throat> excuse me tuba actually is colorblind so she's able to go through any maze she wants that's color wise so yeah that's pretty funny and you had some good moments and you would figure that things kind of changed the point of where it's like they would take hazel away from tuba but tuba will be okay but of course tuba it seems like she actually is lonely so I'm like, ooh. <clears throat> so here is the messed up play that happened in episode five where we're stuck at right now, which I'm pretty sure the second half because it's usually 10 episodes. So the second half will be coming sooner or later. But anyways, it ends with them going through the door and then one one actually in quotations, I think one one actually is going to move the cart 
away again so he can have more time to actually whittle him down, which makes sense. That's what he's technically doing. So you have Tuba who actually had to be forced to throw Hazel into the next cart into Grace's arms. And meanwhile, we have Simon who goes and says, I'm going to help her. So he goes over there. And instead of actually what you think of doing where he's like, okay, I'm just going to pick you up and I'm going to let you stay on this cart that's moving and see you. So at least you're spared. No, he actually goes over there, steps on her freaking damn hand with his, and note he actually has magnetic shoes, magnetic turn on shoes. So he steps on her foot, smashing it undoes the button and she falls to her doom into one of the wheels of the carts of the trains so she actually got killed too now you would figure that simon's not a stupid idiot simon could at least say oh yeah she actually decided to stay on the other cart <laughs> at least that works because I'm not able to take her because it will be too much weight and we both will fall to our doom. So it's like, yeah, that would have worked out nicely. No, nope. he said, no, I willed her. <laughs> it's like he straight up just told the freaking girl what he did. And I'm like, wow. And it's like, oh, you got to check out our numbers. I'm like, damn, dude, they wrote you like a man. Really? They wrote you like a boy. What the fuck? While Grace actually is going to comfort Hazel, it looks like the second option actually appears of where it's like, you know, she's not actually a real person. She actually was one of the characters that they would find to help them grow. So yes, out of her sheer sadness and everything, Hazel actually morphed, unconcealed herself. And now here's her real identity, which she is not a kid at all. So now you're going to have this tough decision of, Oh my gosh, kick her off the freaking damn train. She's dead or B. Yeah. This is going to get something very, very unbelievable, which is like, man, this is some good storytelling. The only thing that is a little bit of, it's like many things in too bad when it comes to Hazel, I can't actually talk about the fact of, okay, so she was a child who actually was maybe boarding school or something. She doesn't have shoes on. She has no shoes. Her skirt, I bet she had, is gone too. So, well, I, th I think she has shorts, but still her shoes are gone. Her hair is like wildly. It's like as if she's turned kind of Tarzan before, you know, truly embracing the Tarzan look. So I can't talk about her, but I can talk about the fact of the conductor idea, which I guess I need to see season one again to understand, which is like, they were like, oh, the original conductor, the conductor has so many numbers on them and the conductor this, conductor that. And I'm like, and he said, oh, the guy conductor, I'm like guy conductor, I guess he meant creator of the train. But even so, it's like, I don't know. I mean, is he really truly the conductor? I'm pretty sure he had one one in command in the first place. So, anyways, I think it was him. Then it was one one. Then it was the woman looking for him. And then it was one one again. I wonder where's that woman? I would like to actually see her again, definitely, because that would be pretty cool to see how she goes. I should. Mm, yeah, I think all her numbers were actually green. So, yeah. So, basically, what was this whole entire plan that's going on with this whole entire season or half a season or I don't know. Should we call this actually season three? I still say season two and a half, but whatever. What's going on is basically when one is trying to get grace and simon finally off this train <laughs> so everyone else can crumble so it's like yes it can now be healthy again and they're the build up right now they're the ones that's building up and we have no idea that you know tulip was there and they were there too and lucky for us that tulip did not actually you know not to mention it's like oh frick if they would have saw one one with her but of course they wouldn't know until later that he's the conductor and i bet those guys are like they would have been pissed off if 
in the end they were actually with her and they're like oh what the fuck and they would have so actually be pissed at yeah but anyways we're getting some good development on those two characters it's too bad that <laughs> yeah they have a big massive thing on their hands that's like Oh, geez, are they going to take her out or are they going to actually let her live? This is going to be a really messed up heart tricker. But I will have to say for what Simon did, that was mess a freak up. Because, well, previously he was talking about, oh, I can take her on my own. You think as I, as you're daring me to? I'm going to still take her on own instead of, no, we're going to take Tuba to everyone. And then we all will swarm on her and take her down. But, well, he was able to take her out, and I'm like, did we really have to take her out? Did you really have to do that? You could have just got her on the damn cart, you scooted away, and she's, because it seemed to me that there was attachment and whatever, but, geez. Yeah, I figured as much that, yes, one one is doing more interesting tactics to actually get these two off the damn train. <laughs> Oh, we're going to have to see the second half and how this plays out.